Well, Richard and Dee Dee, thank you all for taking time today to sit down with me and talk through the history of Tina Visors and where it started. And, and let's begin there. What, where and how did, did the first seeds for the idea of Tina Visors get planted in your hearts? It was in the spring and uh, we had a nine-year-old daughter and she had a sandbox in the backyard. And it was about time for her to start playing in it. And I was out working in the yard, saw that there were lots of weeds in the sandbox. So I sat down and started um, weeding the sandbox, sitting in the sand. And my mind hardly ever stops going. And so it was just going back over a conversation I'd had with our oldest daughter, who was a, um, probably a freshman in high school at that time. And she had talked to me about some of the other freshman girls that she knew who had given up their virginity that year to older fellas. I think both of them were seniors. And I was thinking about how sad that made me. And I knew well enough that they had um, grown up going to church. They had mothers and fathers um, who were still married. They'd grown up in a pretty stable household. And just thinking about how sad that they'd fallen into this trap and the pressure from these older boys. And then my mind kept going and I started thinking about in our small school, how many Christians were in that school. And yet probably most of them didn't know each other because they kind of stuck that in their back pocket when they went to school. So all of those thoughts were going around together in my mind about the sadness of these poor choices the girls had made and about um, this kind of secret Christian group, pretty large group, that was there at the school. And I, in my memory, I said this out loud. I don't know that I really did, but I said, somebody needs to take this and do something with it. And it was one of those times I didn't audibly hear God, but I knew it was his voice. And I heard him say, you do it. With that, there was kind of a lot of panic inside of me to think that God had asked me to do that because my first problem was that we had one teenager. We had three younger children behind her. And I had decided that I did not like <laughs> teenagers. So the thought of working with teenagers overwhelmed me. Besides that, I didn't grow up in a youth group or in a church environment um, where I'd ever seen anybody work with teenagers. And um, so that was very daunting to me. <laughs> and that's the beginning of a really long story <laughs> that lasts about 25 years after that. <laughs> you know, God gave Dee Dee the vision but what really motivated us to push through and do something was the fear of what was going on with our daughter mm -hmm. and the environment she was growing up in. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing for those kids to hold on to. Mm -hmm. They were uh, almost helpless uh, with the peer pressure they were having at school every day. Mm -hmm. So that gave us the incentive mm -hmm to take the vision Dee Dee had been given mm -hmm. and to manufacture it and get with other parents and, and push through. We were determined that our children, if we could help it, were going to grow up in a better environment mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. what she had been exposed to. Yeah.